Okay, um, basically what I have here is the i7 2700K and I have the i7 uh, 3770K and that uh, that's the Ivy Bridge, that'll be on the right, on the left is a 2700K and I'll zero in on that. They're both clocked at 4.8, that'll show up after the test. Okay, that's a 2700. Okay, and this is the 3770K. So the Sandy Bridge against the Ivy Bridge. And we'll just show you the difference between the two. I'll try to do this at the same time. Okay, as you can see the Ivy Bridge on the right, at when it's clocked at 4.8, it ran a 977. Okay, and then the 2700K ran a 943. And there you go. Um, what I'll do is a separate video I'll tape in here and show you the differences between the two chips because there is differences there's pros and cons to both of them and um, hopefully I can splice this and make it work okay I rebooted uh, the other computer the 2700 K on your left um, that is booted in at 5.2 and I just want to run a, a Cinebench test on that to give you an idea and give you a score on that one showing more or less what this one would be maxed out keep the temperature I always like to keep an eye on the temperatures and make sure they're well within their boundaries and this is clocked at 5.2 and I can show you that after this It's running a Corsair H100. Okay. That's a little lower. I've had it higher. Um, but that's a 1019. Okay. And that's running at uh, 5.2. But there you go. 1019. And that's the 2700K. So. Okay. First off, uh, I have the 2700K here, and then I also have the new Ivy Bridge. This is the 3770K. Uh, both these processors are priced really close. They're within $10 to $20. Um, the Ivy Bridge will be the one that's $10 to $20 more, if you can find one right now, that is. And so what I did is I did the little test that um, hopefully if I splice this, I'll do it after the test. But either way, um, what you're going to find out and see is that when they're both clocked at the same clock, so for instance, these are both at 3.5 stock, and they turbo themselves to 3.9. When you run Synbench on them and other tests, what happens is, is the Ivy Bridge passes, surpasses the 2700K or 2600K if you're look if you have that um, by around 10%. So it's not a huge difference, but it is a difference, and they're doing it on a 22 nanometer die versus a 32 nanometer. So um, there's a lot of neat things that this can do. And this definitely has a place. And what I want to go over is, you know, what would be the pros then for the 2700K? Or if you have a 2600K, what are the pros to that over the Ivy Bridge? Okay, first off, a lot of people have been hearing about heat on these things. You know, you're like, oh, these things heat up quick. And you get a lot of people that are like a little unrealistic saying, oh, it burns up, that kind of stuff. No. Intel did a great thing. They took what was awesome what the sandy bridge came when they came out of sandy bridge it blew everything away and it still does 
um, you can clock this thing to the hill. Think about it. You're running in the 5 gig range on a little water cooler. You know, like an H100 or an H80 or H70. Um, you're, you're running in a 5 gig, you know, in that range. Um, years back when we had a 775 socket, you know, for Intel, you know, we were going from 3.0 to 3.5. It was like, you know, it heated up like crazy and it would melt eggs and you could do cooking on it. But um, what's neat about the Sandy Bridge is they're able to achieve something great. I really believe they have with the Sandy Bridge. Um, what they've done with the Ivy Bridge now is think about it. They come out, they took all that power that's in a 32 nanometer, shrunk it to a 22 nanometer, okay, and they gave it a 10% boost for clock per clock over the Sandy Bridge, okay. So uh, when you look at the different tests that I've done, You'll, you'll sit back and, and hopefully you can, with, with the stuff I give you, you can sort of, you know, take this input and then maybe watch another video of somebody else and make an educated decision, well, what's the best chip for you? If you're a person that likes to sit down and tinker or you like to run your computer 24-7 at a high clock and you have cooling for it, um, I would say definitely go with the 2600 or 2700K stick with that chip or if you already have that chip and you're running like I run mine at 552 all the time I've run it for just well some but just over a year got it in January end of January beginning of February so um, that's something that I'm gonna stick with that and not jump to the Ivy bridge okay just because it's been running great at that high clock um, to be careful with this I'll just the 3770k what needs to be you need to be careful with is uh, if you're going to overclock this, probably anything past, I, I didn't look at the temperatures that close, just at high end, but say 4.4. If you're going to push this thing, you need good cooling on it. Definitely you can't use this this little stock fan on it. You can't. So I would suggest doing like, a, you can do a, I don't know, a H80. You can do some of the Corsair lineups for the water cooling. Um, it has to be a decent thick radiator. Um, and... Preferably, if you're going to get this chip and you're going to keep it at a high clock because it, it creates heat. That's the biggest thing with this. That would be, say, the downside to this is it creates heat. But at the same token, understand that it's outperforming the Sandy Bridge at any at the same clock. Uh, so it, it just depends on what you're doing. If you're building a new rig, I would say just grab this and go. Just grab the Ivy Bridge. It's new technology, smaller, smaller processor. Uh, and who knows what down the line, maybe they'll have some enhancements on it. Um, usually when they say that, they never do, but uh, maybe I see it on video card drivers, but not so much on processors, because it seems like every three months they're coming out with a new one kind of thing. So anyway, um, I don't want, I'm rambling too much, but the 3770K is an awesome processor. I'm not downing it at all. It's just if you're going to overclock this thing, get it up 4.6 to 4.8, you need an H100. You need a Corsair H100. costs about $114 on new egg, I think. Uh, you, you need to get something that's going to cool this bad boy because it's going to get hot. It, there's, no, there's no way around it when you overclock it. Now you say, hey, I clock it to 4.1, 4.2. And so what it's doing when it's running at that, at that speed, it's running at the same speed of this, say, at 4.2. It's running at this at 4.4. So the 2600K or a 2700K. So it just depends what you want. If you're, I never overclocked, I'd say definitely grab the Ivy Bridge and go with it. You can keep the stock heat sink. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Put it in your rig and away you go and it's going to perform awesome. It's going to have awesome uh, benchmarks. I'll, I'll post some of those on a Word document here in a little bit. And it's, it's really going to do an awesome job for you. So uh, you know, a lot of people out there are wondering who's better, which one's better, and I've heard from other people, you decide which one's better. Um, I'm just benching it, and from there, you know, you choose which one's the best for you. Because Here are the test results for the two processors, the 2700K and the 3770K. And you're going to notice at top the stock settings 3.5, and right on down to where I ended up going to 5.2 on the Sandy Bridge. And you'll notice I had it highlighted in like purple. I booted in at 5 with the IV, but it wasn't stable. It was too hot and it couldn't run any kind of test. So roughly right around 5 or 4.8 is where I was able to get the IV bridge up to. And you notice on the bottom I ran the 3D mark score. And the reason this at 4.8 that the IV is a little stronger is because um, the CPU test that's in it it's a little more efficient running when it's running at clock per clock. So, but then of course, if you clock the 
see any bridge up to 5.2 you get a little stronger score out of it so 